Hi, I'm Tova with Professor Pincushion and today we're going to be sewing a hooded cloak. I'll be using the pattern I made in the hooded cloak pattern tutorial to create this romantic cloak that's great for any number of costumes. I keep mine pretty simple looking but it's an easy project to customize and embellish with your own flair. Ready to get started on the hooded cloak? Let's go! Let's take a look at some of the supplies I'm going to be using for this project. So first I have my pattern pieces and this was the pattern pieces I created for our hooded cloak pattern tutorial. So if you haven't done that first, I recommend doing that before doing this tutorial. You also need your fabric. So I have my main fabric and then my lining fabric. It really depends on the length and how big your cloak is, on how much fabric you're going to need. For each of these I use about 4 yards of 60 inch width fabric. I have fabric scissors some ribbon for doing the ties. I would say a yard and a half is probably enough and this is about an inch and a quarter in width. You need your all-purpose thread, some pins and needles, and your sewing gauge. Also not shown here is going to be my iron and my sewing machine. From each of the patterns for the cape and for the hood, I'm going to cut two out of my main fabric and two out of my lining. The first section we're going to be working on is the cape part of our cloak. Now if you're working with a fabric that has nap like my velour here, make sure that you check out our video on working with velvet for some helpful tips especially in cutting out fabrics with nap. Also you'll notice that my cloak is a little bit on the short side. I just made it smaller so it's easier to get the whole thing on camera. So I'm going to take both pieces of the cape section and I'm going to place them together right side to right side matching up one straight edge which is going to be our center back and you notice I'm doing the one that has the notch from my pattern. So line this up top to bottom and the raw edges I'm going to go ahead and pin so I can sew a seam right here and I'm going to do the exact same thing for my lining cape sections. Consult your pattern for your seam allowance. I'm doing a half inch don't forget to back stitch. And when you finish with your seams, both for your main fabric and for your lining, go ahead and press them. Next, I'm going to do a stay stitch that's going to be at the top neckline of the cape. So that's this curved area up here at the top. So with the stay stitch, I'm going to start here, sew till I get to the seam, and then I'll start on the other side and sew until I get to the seam. Now for the width, I'd probably do this about a half inch away from the raw edge. So keeping with your half inch seam allowance, you're not sewing anything together, it's just a single layer. And this is just to help keep this from getting distorted later. And you're going to do the same thing with your lining piece. The stay stitch is just a regular straight stitch. You can go ahead and do a back stitch at the beginning and end of your stitch. And this is just to help make sure that the curved area isn't going to get stretched out. Take your ribbon, which should be a yard and a half, and cut it in half. And we're going to baste it to our main fabric of the cape. Now I'm going to take one edge, and if your fabric has an obvious right side, you're going to place it right side of the ribbon to the right side of your fabric. And I would place it so that it's three quarters of an inch down from the neckline. So this is the neckline, and this is one side. I'm going to go three quarters of an inch down. And I'm matching up the raw edges of the ribbon with the raw edges of my cape here. So I'm going to do this side and then I'm going to go ahead, move this over and apply my other ribbon to the other side of the cape and we're just going to baste it into place. With this basting stitch, you don't have to worry about doing any back stitching. It's just temporarily holding the ribbon into place. Place your cape and your cape lining pieces together, right side to right side, matching up your raw edges. And you want to make sure that you keep this ribbon out of the way on both sides. So after you pin all the way around, next you're going to be doing a seam, but not for the whole thing. You're going to be doing a seam here, along the curve here, and then on this other straight side. So this inner curve right here, you're going to keep free. There's not going to be any stitches there for now. After I finish doing my seams at the bottom corner by the hemline, you can go ahead and cut off those corners, being careful not to cut into your stitches of your seam because we don't want to create a hole. Next we're going to take care of the understitching. So this is still inside out and you can start pulling it right side out. What you're going to do next, we have the seam allowance here. You're going to pull it over so it's underneath 
the lining section. And you can see I'm pulling the ribbon so it's separated and it's going with my main fabric and not the lining. So I'm pulling that apart, seam allowance underneath, and then I'm gonna stitch right next to the seam line on the lining section. And you're gonna do it just for the areas where you have your seam. So the sides and then the hemline area. And this is going to attach our seam allowance to our lining and help keep our lining on the inside. It just makes it easier when we fold it to the inside of our cape. You're not gonna be able to do this in a single stitch. When I do my understitching, I'm gonna start at the top where the neckline is. I'm gonna do it along here. And you usually can end about right here before it starts getting hard. So just go as far as you can go and then start again over in this section and then continue on as far as you can go in that section as well. When you're doing an understitch, you wanna look at the right side of the fabric. So you can see I'm pulling that lining away from my main fabric. And I keep checking to make sure that I can fill my seam allowance underneath the lining section and I'm sewing really close to that seam line. Don't forget to backstitch. And again, you're just doing this for the areas where you just created your seams. After you finish doing the understitching, you can go ahead and turn the rest of your cape right side out so I can see the right side of my velour and the right side of my brocade. Next, we're gonna do a top stitch and you're still gonna do it at the same places where you did your seam. So it's gonna be this edge, this hemline, and then this edge up here. So this is still open, this round curved area here. So you're just gonna be stitching right close to the edge and that's gonna give you a nice finish right here at the bottom of the cape and at the sides. When doing my top stitch, I'm looking at the right side of my cape. So I'm looking at the gray fabric and I'm keeping my ribbon pulled out because I don't wanna accidentally stitch that. And then sewing right next to that edge and don't forget to back stitch. Our neckline here is still open. So you're gonna take the lining and your main fabric and you're gonna pin them together for this whole curve and then do a basting stitch just to keep them together. You can do your basting stitch on the same line that you did your stay stitch. We're now gonna move on to the hood pieces. So I'm gonna take my hood pieces, place them together right side to right side, matching everything up. And then you're going to pin and do a seam on this from here to here. So the two straight sides are gonna stay open. And then you're gonna do the same for your lining pieces for the hood as well. For the hood lining only, on this bottom edge, you're going to press up whatever your seam allowance is. And you can see I've already done that. And for me, it was a half inch. So you can do it for the short edge. This long edge, I haven't done anything to it. And you're doing it from the right side to the wrong side. This is still inside out. And after you just pin it, your half inch, you're just gonna press it. Place your main hood piece inside your lining so it's right side to right side. So this is right side out, this is still inside out, and you're matching everything up. So the seams are matching up here and then the edges are matching up here. Now you'll notice because this is still folded up, my gray fabric should extend past the folded edge by my seam allowance, so a half inch. So I'm gonna pin this whole long edge here. I'm not doing anything with the short edge, just the long edge. You're gonna match up this raw edge of both of them. You're gonna pin and then you're gonna do a seam for this edge. Just like we did with the cape, you're now gonna do an understitching for the hood. So you separate your lining from your main fabric. The seam allowance goes underneath the lining. And you can just pull this apart as you're sewing and you're gonna be looking at the front, so the right side of the fabric in doing a stitch right next to that seam line. And you're doing this for the seam that we just created. After the understitch is done, go ahead and flip everything right side out. The lining goes inside the outer shell of your hood. And then you can go ahead and do a top stitch on that same seam. It's time to attach our hood to the top of our cape. This is the basted edge that we created. Now I'm gonna take the raw edge of the hood, so the bottom, and I'm gonna start matching it up to this raw edge here. I'm just going to pin my gray fabric only, making sure it's right side to right side and leaving my lining out of the way for the hood. It's definitely gonna be attached to the lining on the cape 
but for the hood, we're keeping this out of the way. So after I pin both of these together and making sure my seams and ends are meeting up, then you could go ahead and do your seam. For the seam between the hood and the cape, you're gonna keep it closed and press it up towards the hood because then we're gonna take our folded edge of our hood lining and you're going to pin it over that seam allowance. So the edge of the fold should come right on that stitch that we just created for creating that seam. And all this is now going to be enclosed and it should look a lot nicer. We're going to attach my hood lining to my cape with a slip stitch, which is a hand stitch. And I'm gonna go ahead and use a contrasting thread for this. So it shows up better, but I would use a matching thread. So you can see I already have my thread on my needle with a knot at the end and I'm coming up on top where my hood lining is, just underneath, so I could try to hide my knot as best I can. So it slips in there. So I'm right on this folded edge of the hood part, and then I'm gonna grab a little bit of the lining of the cape. Now I'm just grabbing the lining, being careful not to grab my main gray fabric because I don't want this to show up on the right side. And I'm just gonna pull that gently and now I'm gonna grab a little bit now of the hooded part of my lining, pull that through, and then grab a little bit of the cape now. So you can see I'm just going back and forth between the two sections, keeping my stitches small, and it should be hardly noticeable. You can just see my red thread a little bit, but if you use a matching thread color, it's not gonna show up at all. So I'm gonna do this for the whole length. Look at that, our hooded cloak is finished. If you have any basting stitches showing, make sure to remove them. And if you make your own cape, please share a picture with us. New tutorials are released weekly, so please subscribe to be notified of the next release. Make sure to check out our other videos and visit professorpincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 200 sewing video tutorials, including our exclusive premium content. Our premium membership is only $5 a month for unlimited access and only available at professorpincushion.com. Also, don't forget to download our mobile app for videos on the go. Thanks for watching.